Hey, this is B. Sparrow from Buzz Tweet Radio. Join me every morning from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Spreaker.com. We can also be heard on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, and Podchaser. That's Buzz Tweet Radio with three Z's. On Spreaker.com, it's your girl, Miss Sparrow. Holla. Everybody, what's up? It's your girl, B. Sparrow. How y'all doing today? Beautiful day over here in Oxford Hill, Maryland, not too far from um, Southeast DC, for those of y'all who don't know. It's nice and sunny here. They're having a march on the mall. I think they call it the Get Off My Neck, Get Your Knee Off My Neck March, headed by um, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King the Third, and Al Sharpton. <laughs> My bad. If I seem teary-eyed, I just watched uh, Martin Luther King the Third's granddaughter. Her speech it made it brought tears to my eyes. She's so young. Her name is Yolanda Renee King. Um, she's twelve years old. She she gave a cute little powerful speech. Uh, <laughs> I hope someday that, you know, I hope she knows the truth about who she really is, the truth. But uh, I just wanted to hop on because I wanted to talk about the fall wheels again. Y'all know I've been following the fall wheels. I did my first video on them about 10 months ago. For those of y'all who are not familiar with the fall wheels, uh, with the fall wheels, fall wheels, I remember as a little girl, the father, Jerry Falwell Sr. He was a tele-evangelist. I think my grandmother used to watch him. Um, if only she knew <laughs> what we know today, I, I'm pretty sure that she would not be watching or listening to a white man preached the Bible to her. I'm being real, straight up. All right? If you don't like it, balcony right there. You can jump off, do what you want. So anyway, I wanted to talk about yeah, the other day. Okay, so Falwell Sr. is the founder of Liberty University. I can't remember the year, but it was what it's called. Lynchburg Academy. I read somewhere that they changed the name because it was too familiar with the lynchings. Liberty University it became, but black people were not allowed to attend Liberty University until I believe the early 80s, early to mid 80s. For whatever reason, all I can say is I believe that it was it had a lot of white supremacy. Um, Jerry Falwell Sr. was a reverend. I believe that he did not like black people as did a lot of people in the 50s and 60s, and as a lot of people do. Today, I'm just gonna come out and say, it, I believe that he was racist. He didn't allow black people to attend the school that he 
created or founded up until 1980. You were not allowed to attend Liberty University if you had skin like mine. And I know that if you was gay, you were not allowed to enroll at Liberty University. I don't know if they stopped that after the gay scandal happened. And if y'all do not know about the gay scandal, I'm gonna show you a video that I did 10 months ago. I'm not gonna show the whole video. It's about uh, 33 minutes long, but I will commentate on the video. And then I'm gonna show you, it's gonna lead up to what I wanted to talk about today. All fall well. I don't know why I feel like talking about this. I just feel like people need to know because no one is talking about it. The way they talked about R. Kelly, the way they talked about Bill Cosby, the way they talked about Russell Simmons, they're not talking about the fall wells. So somebody needs to talk about it. Um, let me find the video once again. I had it here, but um, let me see. Let me go to my channel right quick. I know my eyes are tearing up. I got. I need to wipe my eyes. Let me see. Here we go. No, not this one. This one. Yes, I want to talk about the fall wells. The they're probably the most pow, one of the most powerful evangelical evangelical Christian families. Like I said, the father started Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, by the way, <laughs> ironically enough. So I'm going to play some of this video to give you kind of an idea of the type of person that Jerry Falwell Sr. was. Jerry Falwell Jr. and C. This stuff I can't make up. This should really be a soap opera, a series of nothing. So I'm gonna start out with Jerry Falwell Sr. Jerry Lamont Falwell Sr. for August 11, 1933, was an American Southern Baptist pastor, TV evangelist, and conservative activist. He was the founding pastor of the Thomas Road Baptist Church, a mega church in Lynchburg, Virginia. He founded Lynchburg Christian Academy now Liberty Christian Academy in 1967 and Liberty University in 1971 and co-founded the Moral Majority in 1979, according to Wikipedia. During the 1950s and 1960s, Falwell spoke and campaigned against the U.S. civil rights activist Martin Luther King Jr. and the racial desegregation of public school systems by the U.S. federal government. Liberty Christian Academy, LCA, founded as 
Lynchburg Christian Academy is a Christian school in Lynchburg, which was described in 1966 by the Lynchburg News as, quote, a private school for white students, unquote. The Lynchburg Christian Academy later opened in 1967 by Falwell as a segregation academy and as a ministry of Thomas Road Baptist Church. The Liberty Christian Academy is today recognized as an educational facility by the Commonwealth of Virginia through the Virginia State Board of Education, Southern Association of College and Schools, and the Association of Christian Schools International. On his evangelist program, the Old Town Gospel Hour in the mid-1960s, Falwell regularly featured segregationist politicians like Lester Maddow and George Wallace. About Martin Luther King, he said, I do question the sincerity and non-violent intentions of some civil rights leaders such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Mr. James Farms, and others who are known to have left-wing association. That information has been coming out maybe here in 2019. Now, this article that I'm reading from, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> was written in 08. I just want to point out, it's ironic that um, <laughs> it's ironic that I'm playing that part of the video about Martin Luther King and how Jerry Falwell didn't care too much for him. And Martin Luther King III is speaking right now, live on the mall in DC at a march. All right, let me get back. Let me get back to this for y'all. If Chief Justice Warren and his associates had known God's word, and had desired to do the Lord's will, I am quite confident that the 1954 decision would never have been made. And I often wondered how it would have been had we never desegregated the schools. If you look at the school... I wondered that myself. <laughs> I wondered that myself. I believe that we should have stayed to ourselves and figured it out ourselves. And I still believe that today. But as you can see, people are still marching, seeking for, I don't know, um, I don't know what they are seeking for. Because I'm a firm believer in the Most High Yah. And that's who I look to. That's who I seek. Whatever I need, I seek him for it. Whatever I got is from him. That's how I see it. Uh, I wanted to for fast forward this video to show you. So you have an, you have an example of um, the type of person Jerry Falwell Sr. was. But let me skip forward because this is important. I want to bring you up to date from what I got in the, my email this morning about this family. I, I, did a, I did a video on it on them two days ago. I want to go over that too. But let's get back to senior. Check this out. Anti-gay industry. Wait, I have to take it back a bit. I have to take it back a bit so you will understand. Just a bit. I don't really want to go back that far, but as written by the Bible. Gay okay. right groups called Farwell an agent of intolerance and the founder of the anti-gay industry. For statements he had made and for campaigning against LGBT social movements, Farwell supported Anita Bryant's 1977 Save Our Children campaign to overturn a Florida, Florida ordinance prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation in a similar movement in California in urging the, repe the repeal in urging the repeal of the ordinance Falwell told one crowd quote 
Gay folks would just as soon kill you as look at you. End quote. When the LGBT friendly metropolitan community church was almost accepted into the World Council of Churches, Falwell called them root beasts and stated this vow and satanic system will one day be utterly annihilated and there'll be a celebration in hell. So wait, he said that not realizing that he was part of the satanic um, culture. He was part of it. I, I don't. I don't believe. I, I believe he was an evil, racist man. That's how he was brought up. That's how his father was brought up. His father before him. These are. The ancestors of our slave owners. These are the ancestors of our slave owners. You can tell by how they act. You can tell by their fruits where they are from and what they are about. But let me continue. Let me continue because this is important. Farwell also regularly linked the AIDS pandemic to LGBT issues and stated AIDS is not just God's punishment for homosexuality. It is God's punishment for the society that tolerates homosexuals. After comedian and actress Ellen DeGeneres came out as a lesbian, Falwell referred to her in a sermon as Ellen Generous. I actually thought that was her name, Ellen Degenerate. Degenerates mocked him, saying, Really? He called me that? Ellen Degenerate. I've been getting that since the fourth grade. I guess I'm happy I could give him work. Falwell's legacy regarding homosexuality is complicated by his support for LGBT civil rights, as well as his attempts to reconcile with the LGBT community in later years. In October of 1999, Falwell hosted a meeting of 200 evangelicals with 200 homosexuals at Thomas Road Baptist Church for an anti-violence forum, during which he acknowledged that some American evangelicals' comments about homosexuality entered the realm of hate speech that could incite violence. At the forum, Baldwin told homosexuals in attendance, I don't agree with your lifestyle, I would never agree with your lifestyle, but I love you, and added, Anything that leaves the impression that we hate the sinner, we want to change that. He later commented to New York Times columnist Frank Rich that admittedly, evangelicals have not exhibited an ability to build a bond of friendship to the gay and lesbian community. We've said go somewhere else. We don't need you here at our churches. Our churches. Our churches. You see, there's something about these evangelical Christians that I don't like. They walk around here like they so holy, so better than the next person, but they are the most scandalous people walking around here in the United States of this here America and abroad. These so called evangelical. Christians, come on. And so in the latest news, we know that Jerry Falwell, I'm skipping ahead of myself a little bit. The latest news is we know that Jerry Falwell Jr. is resigning from Liberty University, as did his father, who was the founder. Let me skip ahead to that part of the video and show y'all what I'm talking about. 
They so holier than thou. They are so holier than thou that it's, it's ridiculous. And no one is talking about it. No one is talking about it. It says, the pastor, leading evangelical pastor resigns amid gay affair allegations. Let me take it back a little bit because I know they found him dead at the age of 71. I think it was in 2007 in his office at Liberty University where he was also buried. Two days after the emotional, devastating September 11th tragedies, the evangelist joined religious broadcaster Pat Robertson in stating that pagans, homosexuals, abortionists, and feminists were partly to blame for the attacks. 9-11 attacks. The most high who allowed America's enemies to give us probably what we deserve. On May 15, 2007, Jerry Falwell died suddenly of cardiac arrhythmia in his office at Liberty University at the age of 73. He was buried in the grounds of the university he founded. So, like again, I was saying, I just wanted to give you some background on Jerry Falwell Sr. And as I continue to do my research, I came across other articles that you're not hearing about of him uh, being accused and being found with uh, pornography items in his home. Now, I'm not going to read that article because it, I don't believe that article is true. Well, there you have it. An alleged article, an article that alleged that, that um, pornography in other items was found in his home amid gay affair allegations jerry falwell senior resigns from liberty university the university that he founded in lynchburg virginia once again i'm talking about these evangelical christians that walk around here acting like they are holier than thou, but they are so scandalous. I swear the Falwells could have been and can be a um, reality. I was going to say a soap opera, but I don't even know if they do soap operas anymore, but they can have their own reality show. Uh, this is fascinating to me. No one is talking about this. You can talk about R. Kelly. You can talk about Bill Cosby. You can talk about Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion and all you know, what about these evangelical Christians? Huh? Let me bring us up to date. Let me bring you up to date to Junior. So I believe. So, and I did that just to show you how scandalous these people really are. But they're not going to tell you. They're going to hide it and keep it locked so that future citizens won't know about this. They want to paint the Falwells as the perfect white family. But as we see and will continue to see, the Falwells need their own sitcom. Did Seriously, I just say that? <laughs> the Falwells. Jerry Falwell Sr., he's not here anymore, but they should have had a sitcom on national TV. So let me go and skip to the future, to the present, I mean, of uh, Jerry Lamar, Jerry Lamar Falwell Jr. Jerry Lamar Falwell Jr. In a bombshell article 
the New York Times uncovered new details about what may have been the real motivation for Jerry Falwell Jr.'s endorsement of Donald Trump for president in 2016. A crucial backing that helped bring evangelical voters to the Trump camp and help him win the presidency. I'm telling you, Donald Trump is surrounded by evil. He himself being evil too. He has been mentioned in Okay, since I don't want to talk about Donald Trump, I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to give you um, what's about to happen because I don't really don't want to talk about Donald Trump. But as you can see, um, he is very popular amongst the evangelical community, the evangelical Christian community. Jerry Farwell Jr. and his wife met a pool boy when they went on vacation in Miami. They met a pool boy and they befriended this pool boy, took him in under their wings. And there were rumors started, rumors started to circulate that the three of them were having a sexual affair. The three of them. They gave him money to invest in a business, a youth hotel in Miami. I think it's called a hostel. This is Becky and Jerry Falwell. They met, with, met this pool boy and there was something about some racy pictures start to surface. And y'all probably wondering why Tom Arnold is involved. I'm going to take it back and let you hear of it yourself. Let me take it back. Let me let me let me let me tell you in the video. <laughs> I just want to skip Donald Trump. Although Donald Trump is an important part of the story also because um, initially, Jerry Falwell Jr. was going to endorse Ted Cruz in the 2016 presidential election. But since these pictures came out, he decided to endorse Donald Trump. And I believe somehow my, Donald Trump and Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen, okay, let me let y'all I guess y'all have to hear about Donald Trump anyway. Yeah. Here we go. This is the story. Win the presidency. I'm telling you, Donald Trump is surrounded by he has been mentioned in so many scandals that it's ridiculous. And that this man is still president bothers me. Sure, they're try, trying to impeach him, but in all honesty, I do not see that happening. It didn't. And I actually see Donald Trump serving another term. You heard it here first. So, sourcing information from a Florida lawsuit filed against Farwell from Southern District of New York's investigation into former Trump attorney Michael Cohen and from the efforts of actor and comic Tom Arnold, the newspaper paints a portrait of a web of sexual, financial, and legal entanglements between the Trump campaign, Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife, and Giancarlo Grande. It's funny that the ad that I was reading at the time, this was 10 months ago, it's funny that they call the, the sexual act an entanglement. An entanglement, which is what Jada Pinkett Smith called her affair with Alston Alcini. See, I did this video before the Jada Pinkett news broke out. 
And this morning I was thinking how much Jada Pinkett, Smith, and Becky Falwell have in common. I was just thinking that this morning. Listen, listen. A pool attendant of Mexican and Cuban parents. The story begins early in the 2016 campaign when Falwell Jr., the president of a fundamentalist Christian Liberty University in position he inherited from his televangelist father, was expected to endorse Senator Ted Cruz. Yes. It came as a shock, however, when he instead threw his support behind Donald Trump, a man whose morals and behavior would be logically be taught to be anathema to the conservative Christian. Look at all those black people behind Donald Trump. Look at that, look at that. It hit Donald Trump and Jerry Falwell sticking out like sore thumbs. And speaking of thumbs, have you noticed that in a lot of Donald Trump pictures, he stick his thumbs out? And it's like he make people that's taking pictures with him, he make them stick their thumbs up too. That's what it seems like. I've noticed that. I wonder if anybody else noticed that. It's crazy. <laughs> that Falwell influenced The New York Times uncovered new details of the backstory behind the fundamentalist endorsement of Trump and helped deliver a crucial voting block. That backstory, in true Trump tag world fashion, features the friendship between Mr. Falwell, his wife, and a former pool attendant at the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami, arrangement engineered by the president's former fixer, Michael Cohen. After having met Giancarlo Grande, after having met Giancarlo Grande while they were staying at the Fountain Blue, Falwell Jr. and his wife, Becky, struck up a friendship with the then 21-year-old man who was bringing them towels and drinks while they lounge by the pool. Before long, the ambitious Mr. Grande was accompanying the Falwells on hiking and water skiing excursions to Virginia. Shortly thereafter, the Falwells were impressed enough with the pool attendant to offer to offer to help him set up in a real estate deal in Florida with one of Grande's childhood friends Jesus Fernandez Jr. The property that the Falwells helped Grande and his partner purchase in 2013 was the Miami Hostile, described by the Times as one of South Beach's best budget party hostels, and as sometimes used as gay friendly. Okay, so we got the idea of Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife, they met this pool boy on vacation in Miami and they befriended him. And people began to, to talk about the relationship. Rumors started to spread about the relationship between Jerry Falwell, Falwell, his wife, and the pool boy whose name is Giancarlo Grande, who just came out a couple of days ago with the truth. I just did the video, but when I woke up this morning, something else is in my inbox. So I had to hop on this story since I am following the fall will. That is not Giovanni right there. That's another person that, that sued them over whatever deal they made. And they brought him in. That, that's G, um, G, Giancarlo Grande, childhood friend that he brought into the deal and he somehow ended up suing you know 
I don't know who or what or where or how, but he ended up suing <laughs> the follower wins. So there you have the two. Um, this is where they was talking about the racing photos. I'm going to have to run it back. Let me run it back. Peccadillo's that, that Donald Trump engaged in with Stormy Daniels and Playboy model Perry McDougal. Described by Google's as racy personal photographs, the sort that would typically be kept between. So this says pool boy, racy pics, gay friendly motel. Sully Falwell's holy image. Who is Sully? Falwell's wife, wife Rebecca, in various stages of undress. Husband and wife. That could be used as leverage to get them in the now active lawsuit. This is where Michael Cohen and Tom Arnold enter the picture. As someone well experienced in negotiating the cover-ups of the embarrassing sexual peccadillos that, that Donald Trump engaged in with Stormy Daniels and Playboy model Karen McDougal, Cohen offered his services as a fixer for the fall. Arnold's involvement came when he taped his conversation with Michael Cohen and shared it with the New York Times. There's a bunch of photographs, personal photographs, that somehow the guy ended up getting, Cohen said in the recording. Whether it was off of Jerry's phone or somehow maybe it got airdropped or whatever the hell the whole thing was. Mr. Cohen told Mr. Arnold in the recording, presumably referring to Grande or Fernandez. These are photos between husband and wife, Mr. Cohen added, joking that the evangelicals were kinkier than Tom Arnold. He explained, I was going to pay him and I was going to get the negatives and do an agreement where they turn over all the technology that has the photographs or anything like that, any copy, but the payoff never happened, he said. And the guy just even deleted them on his own or what have you. Whether Falwell's endorsement of Trump was a result of the personal assistance offered by Cohen as their potentially incriminating photos were in danger of being leaked is something that will be difficult to prove without an admission by Falwell, who for his part has said that no compromising or embarrassing photos and that he never engaged or paid code to represent us in any legal or other professional capacity. Given the circumstantial evidence presented by the New York Times article, however, it looks likely that the election of Donald Trump may have been enabled by a Falwell endorsement that was made out of fear that his evangelical bona fides would be destroyed by evidence of behavior that his Christian right followers would find mighty objective. And then I came across another article speaking on this about a lawsuit that Jerry Falwell settled. So, let's get into that. Jerry Falwell Jr. has settled a Miami court case that made out many of the details behind the South Beach real estate venture his family launched in 2013 with a former Fountain Blue pool attendant, the evangelical leader, and his wife met while on vacation. In a federal court filing, Falwell and the young lawyer who sued him, Gordon Bello, said they have settled the case of an undisclosed monetary sum that Falwell, the president of Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, will pay Bello a legislative aid for the Miami-Dade County Commission. So you know about the pool boy and you know about the racy pictures, but this is, look at this right here. You see, this is the pool boy right here. Uh, coming up next, the evangelical, the pool boy, the comedian, and Michael Cohen. <laughs> um, this is the pool boy right here, where you see that he's meeting Donald Trump. And then you have 
Becky right here right. and it's Jerry right, right here. The married couple. He to me. Becky he looked worried. On the alleged agreement, which he never documented in court. Becky looked worried. So anyway, let me bring you up to date. I'm going to now bring you guys up to date. I didn't mean to do that. And show you what's going on with the video that I just did a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, let me find the video that I did a couple of days ago on this matter. And then I want to talk about what I got in my email this morning. <laughs> We're going to talk about why I said Becky Falwell reminds me of Jada Pinkett Smith. She really, I was thinking about it this morning. And it's ironic that the word entanglement was used in an article that I read 10 months ago. Very ironic, I find it. Radio does not own copyright for this copyrighted material, but under Section 107 of the United States Copyright Law, as noted by the United States Copyright Office, Copyright Act 1976, this video and the music it contains is for its set purposes only. A few months ago, story broke out about Jerry Falwell and his wife, I think her name is Becky Falwell, and a pool boy that they met while vacationing in Miami. They befriended this pool boy and started taking him under their wings. And stories, rumors broke out about an affair, a love affair between the three. Between the three, it's the story of a, um, alleged extortion, affairs, and just downright creepiness. Now, Giovanni G G Giancarlo, Giancarlo, he was on Good Morning America this morning, <laughs> just this morning, and I want to read some of the what he, some of the things that he said. So I'm just going to let the video play while I read what he said this morning. G Giancarlo Grande, the man at the center of the Jerry Falwell Jr. controversy, spoke with Good Morning America this morning, Friday, and maintained that the recently disgraced Liberty University president was aware of the affair between him and Falwell's wife, Becky Falwell. Jerry's lying, Grande told GMA's George Stephanopoulos, because he, he's denying everything. He said that Becky had the affair and he had nothing to do with it. He said, Grande says, that was his game plan under the beginning to throw her under the bus, which I think speaks a lot about who he is, about his character. He was aware from day one of our relationship. Grande said he lived through hell when an attorney threatened to expose the nature of their relationship in 2014. Grande is the former pool attendant accused. He accused Falwell of knowing of his relationship with wife, Becky Falwell, and that Jerry Falwell participated in some of the encounters as a voyeur. Hmm. Now I got to look up that word. Don't judge me. Let me pause this video. Don't judge me. Shoot, that's how you learn. <laughs> I don't even know if I pronounced the word right. V-O-Y-E-U-R. 
Mm -mm. Voyeur. Voyeur. A person who gains sexual pleasure from watching others when they are naked or engaged in sexual activity. Voyeur. Voyeur. So Grande accused Jerry Falwell Jr. as being a voyeur. Voyeur. The couple told Grande they were at a swingers club the night before. This is, did y'all hear this? Are y'all listening to this? These are your evangelical Christians. The people that you listen to teach you the word of the most high y'all. These are the people that you listen to that you listen to. They are swingers. Grande said he was talking to some guests at the Miami Beach Hotel he worked at when he was 20 years old. He alleged Becky was noticeably drunk and flirtatious with him and invited him to a hotel where Jerry would watch their encounter. Falwell Jr., the former president of Liberty University, was lying on the bed when the two went to the room, according to Grande. I don't want to go too much into the details, but he enjoyed watching, Grande said. On Monday, Reuters, and this is where I got this video, where I, pub where I got the article from Reuters, published Grande's account of a sexual relationship between him and Becky Falwell, including what the news agency said was an audio recording of a phone call between both the Falwells and Grande. And I didn't want to play that um, recording, but uh, according to that recording, Becky Falwell was deeply, she was falling for him and the husband knew it because the husband made a statement where um, Grande was making her jealous because he kept mentioning all the other women that he meet. Becky was feeling hurt. So the relationship lasted nearly seven years. The Falwells are accusing Grande of targeting them and other successful women. It's kind of ridiculous to think that this 20 year old with not many resources, I don't come from a family with lots of money, was targeting and preying upon this power couple who have all the political connections and all the money in the world. I feel like, I feel like, they say fail, I was an ideal target for them, Grande said. Overnight, a second allegation emerged from an LU student in a political report. And that's what I wanted to talk about. This comes up this morning. A former student claimed they had a relationship with Becky. So I don't want to read from this article. Getting to Becky. Let's talk about Becky. We're going to talk about Becky right now. We're going to talk about Becky right now. Becky Falwell. The first lady, they call her the first lady of Liberty University. Let me find my article right quick. I just had it. I should have stayed on it. Okay, here, here it is right here. Woo, this is this is a soap opera, y'all. Don't tell me it ain't. So the headline in Politico reads, she was the aggressor. She was the aggressor. Former Liberty student alleges sexual encounter with Becky Falwell. And he says she was the aggressor. This is a long article, so I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I might just scan. A former Liberty University student says Becky Falwell, the wife of the university's then president, Jerry Falwell Jr., jumped into bed with him and performed oral sex on him while he stayed over at the Falwell's home 
after a band practice with her eldest son in 2008. Y'all see the, the connection with Jada Pinkett Smith? She started messing with her son's friend. The student was 22 at the time. Giancarlo was 20. The student was 22 at the time of the encounter near the start of Liberty's fall semester. He says she initiated the act and he went along with it, but despite his rejection of further advances, he said Falwell continued pursuing him, offering him gifts and engaging in banter through Facebook messages. He says she was the aggressor. The messages screenshot. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me find this. Wait a minute. Okay, so wait. <laughs> the messages screenshots of which were provided by the former student of po to Politico suggest a flirtatious relationship that went beyond what might be expected of a mother communicating with her son's bandmates. As you can see in the video that's playing behind, that's not Becky Falwell. That's Jerry Falwell, but that's not Becky Falwell. That picture was taken at a, they was having a party or something on a yacht. He said it was innocent that the drink in his hand was black water. I don't know what black water is. He could have said it was Dr. Pepper, Coke, Pepsi. He said it was black water. Why are you standing there? You a prominent president of a Christian school. And you standing there with your pants and button beside a woman who is not your wife who has her pants on button. Anyway. Back to Giancarlo Grande. I mean, not him. Oh, see, it's so much. The new allegations against Becky Falwell that came out this morning. It says the, the, the screenshots suggest a flirtatious relationship that went beyond what might be expected of a mother communicating with her son's bandmate. One reference, a mutual friend who said that she wants you to cut your bangs when you get your hair cut. One reference, a mutual friend who said she wants you to cut your bangs when you get your hair cut. I think you are Beautiful, just like you are. Becky Falwell wrote in a message sent in September of 2008. You don't want to cover up those killer eyes of yours, and you know that bandana drives me wild. <clears throat> I'm just going to have to bring this up right quick, and then I'll get back to that. So... Julie. Becky Farwell has another accuser who said that she actually was the aggressor in the in the relationship. But there is so much more that I want y'all to see and hear about these Farwells. Um, they calling him the fallen president because he resigned from Liberty University, but he's getting $10.5 million. He's getting $10.5 million. So who, who's fallen? Who has fallen? I'm waiting for this to load.
had the text messages. Now they don't want to show. It's all right. There you go. You're going to have to show yourself sooner or later. She was the aggressor. Y'all may not be able to see them. Y'all see her name right there up top. Okay, back to this article. In another sent in these another text message sent in December of 2008, after the student says he made clear he did not want any romantic involvement with Falwell, she wrote, "Maybe time will heal whatever wounds that I have caused in your Christian hearts." will allow you to forgive me. It goes on to say, in a statement, Jerry and Becky Falwell said of the former students' allegations, it is unfortunate that the coverage of our departure has turned into a frenzy of false and fantastic claims about us. These false and mean-spirited lies have hurt us and our family greatly, and we will respond fully with the truth at an appropriate time. At this time, however, we think it is best to move on and help the Liberty community focus on its very bright future, says the swingers. Says the swingers. Mm, mm, mm. No one is talking about this, though. I wonder why. Say money can't buy you love, but it'll buy you privacy. <laughs> it can sure buy you some privacy. If you Google Beck Falwell, her name is spelled B E Z K I. You're not going to find much. You might find a lot on Jerry, but you're not going to find that much on, on Becky. You won't find much. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. This is like General Hospital or something. All my fall wheels. Mm. So, once again, the allegations on Becky Falwell that recently came up, actually this morning, another former student cast light on the behavior of Jerry and Becky Falwell who have been under intense scrutiny for inappropriate relationships and misuse of their positions at the university. On Sunday, Jerry Falwell acknowledged that Becky had had an affair with Giancarlo Grande, a pool attendant at the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami Beach, with whom they entered a real estate deal. We went over all of that. Grande told Politico and other outlets, that the affair began when he was 20 years old. We talked about that. And continued for seven more years, during which time her husband sometimes watched him and Becky. 
Earlier this summer, the couple was vacationing with friends and family aboard a yacht owned by a Liberty University supporter when Jerry posted a quick and quickly deleted a video, a photo of himself with his pants unzipped and arm around Becky's assistance. Politico has also reported that Liberty has given a contract to a company owned by the Farwell's son and sold properties to friends and family without always making proper tax disclosures. Jerry Falwell resigned at Liberty as Liberty president on Tuesday in exchange for a severance package worth $10.5 million. Two days after his acknowledgement of Becky's affair with Grande. Grande, however, was not a student at Liberty University. Students aren't allowed to have sex outside of marriage. Those who violate the rules risk punishment up to and including explosion. Expulsion, according to the Liberty Way, the school's honor code for students, that same honor code that said Black people could not enroll in Liberty City. Up until mid 80s, early to mid 80s, black people could not enroll in Liberty City. And I also have an article where the, Lib the black football players on Liberty City are leaving. The black football players at Liberty City, Liberty University are leaving. In a statement provided by provided to Politico, which is where I'm reading the article from, politico.com, I don't own anything. Liberty University Senior Vice President Scott Lamb, the school reiterated that it has policies against employees having sexual relationships with students as well as having other inappropriate relationships outside of marriage, whether consensual or not. Becky Falwell was an employee in 2008, and such policies would have fully applied to her as spouse of the then university chancellor and president Liberty University and, and president. She was the wife of the of Jerry Falwell Jr. Let me skip down. So Politico first contacted the former student in 2019 after hearing of his alleged sexual encounter with Falwell from former classmates. <clears throat> he confirmed the encounter, but didn't want to go public with it until recent weeks when the Falwell's behavior came under scrutiny. Politico granted the former student anonymity to describe what he considered inappropriate advances from a woman who was herself a university employee and wife of the university president. He said he did not feel comfortable discussing the encounter earlier because he suffered from feelings of guilt and depression, feared exposure, and didn't want to cause harm to the Falwell family. See what you did to this young man, Becky Falwell? Listen, if you don't, you don't know, listen. He said he grew up in North Carolina and in North Carolina home where the Falwell name loomed large. His mother admired Liberty's founder, Jer Jerry Falwell Sr., the reverend, and was a true believer in the conservative Christian values that Liberty developed a reputation for cultivating in young people. For the then student, the incident with Becky Falwell incited a long struggle with both his faith and mental health. You see what you did to this young man, Becky Falwell? He said he did not tell family members of the cause of his distress and only confided in a few friends. So somebody else know Becky. It made him feel bad. It was, it made him feel bad. It was a depressing thing he struggled with, depression. Afterwards, the former bandmate told Politico. It made me feel bad 
It was a depressing thing. I struggled with depression afterwards. I don't want to be a home wrecker, the former student said. That took a toll on my soul. The former student who is now 34 said he had not heard from Becky Falwell in more than eight years until this week during which her relationship with Grande came to light. He says she texted him to say hello and commiserate over the controversy, over the controversy that an, an engulfed that had engulfed her family. Y'all, I'm not stuttering. Somebody not writing properly. That's I'm just filling in the words. <laughs> Falwell text him, text him on Monday night, shortly before Jerry Falwell Jr. officially resigned as president of Liberty University. The former student said he responded the following day by texting that he was praying for her. It was early in the summer of 2008, 2008, when a member of his rock band suggested a new guitarist who, he said, knew every Led Zeppelin song and could play like Jimmy Page. He was younger than them by a few years. They were in their early 20s, and he was fresh out of high school. But there was another reason for hesitation. His name was Trey Falwell. He was the eldest son of Jerry and Becky Falwell. If we get this kid in the band, we're going to have Falwell's name attached to it, the former student remembered thinking. Still, Trey Falwell could play, and his parents were supportive of the band, even offering to let the guys practice in an abandoned church next to their home, which is sometimes referred to as Falwell Fall in Goody, Virginia. They had this old church on their lot and said, if you guys go in and fix it up, you can play there whenever you want, the former student said. So we went in and put air crates and lightning everywhere. The lightning was with the help of the fall winds. From the very get-go, they wanted to come across as very warm and compassionate. The band Christian the Space, the House of the Holy, a nod to the 1973 album by Led Zeppelin. Members of the band recall Becky Falwell's habit of showing up to their rehearsals. At first, the guys didn't think much of it. She was friendly and hospitable and always offered them food and snacks. It wasn't just a one-time thing, the former student said. It was, oh, hey guys, I brought you some lemonade. And then she would always stick around. She was like, hey, I know I'm a mom, but I want to be friends with everyone, recalled the former bandmate. Eventually, it got awkward, he recalls. It was like, a hey, dude, hey, dude, why is somebody's mom chilling with us type thing? Pretty soon, his bandmates thought they, were, they might have an answer. I could tell she was giving me looks, but... I wanted to downplay it, the former student said. I would think, am I reading too much into this? She would speak almost, she always give little innuendos, almost like she was speaking in code. Still, he figured he was imagining things. I'm just seeing this wrong, he recalled. <laughs> I gotta take a break, because it's about to get juicy, y'all. Once again, talking about the fall wells. and their sexual encounters, accusations against them being swingers. It's coming out. Everything is coming out now. Your evangelical Christians, everything is coming out. Shortly before classes resumed for Liberty's fall 2008 semester, the then student and a few friends were clearing boxes out of the rehearsal space on the Falwell's property. Becky met them in the driveway. 
<laughs> we were all hot and sweaty. She goes, hey, can you help me with something? I said, sure. Yeah, I can help you. I figured she needed some heavy lifting. I'll never forget. She corners me and goes, have you told your friends? I said, excuse me? She goes, have you told your friends that I think you're hot? The former student recalled. She's standing there with her eyes locked on me, waiting to see what I'd say. I probably laughed it off like, uh, no, I haven't told them anything. Still, they showed up because they had gigs to practice for, including one in September at the Campus Artist Series, a showcase of bands compromised of Liberty students and held at the university's newly open Tilly Center, which is named after Becky's father, Tom Tilly, who partially financed the construction of the building. Often the band would practice into the evening, some nights if it would be, it would be just the then students, the, the one who accused Becky and her son Trey jamming together. He said, I was working weird hours at a restaurant, so I wasn't around when Trey and then would chill. This is another former bandmate who, who he told about Becky. Trey Falwell and the former student would stay up drinking whiskey and picking out tunes on their guitars until early in the morning. If it was really late, he'd stay over. He'd say one night, it was too late for him to go home and he remembered they closed the door he remembered walking into the guest room just as he did many times closing the door behind him and preparing for bed he says i'm laying in bed and i hear like giggling to the side of me on the floor. And pardon my French, but I was like, what the F is that? And he looked over and it was Becky. He said it was Becky in his room giggling. He was 22, he was a 22 year old student at Liberty. She was the wife of the president of the school and still is Jerry Falwell Jr. The Falwells were effectively the first family of conservative evangelicalism in America. The first family of conservative evangelicalism in America. After some prodding, he coaxed Falwell into leaving. He slept, woke up, and acted like nothing happened. But nights later, he stayed again. This time, she was more aggressive. The former student remembers that Falwell climbed into bed with him and quickly took down his pants and proceeded to give him oral sex. This is the first lady of Liberty University. Two accusers so far, John Carlo Grande and this student former student of Liberty University who did not want to be identified. He was 22 at the time. I think they say he's 34 now. She liked them young. She liked them in their 20s, their early 20s. Giancarlo Grande said that Becky, said that Jerry and Becky Falwell are swingers. He just came out a couple of days ago with the truth. Back to the article over the last year, the former student has recounted this story several times in interviews with, with, with Politico, Politico. He maintained that while some of the details from the 12 year old encounter are fuzzy, he remembers lying on the right side of the cot. He, remember, he remembers thinking the room looked like an embassy suite. He remembers that Jerry Jr. was away that weekend. 
and that Wesley, the father of second son, wasn't there. Also clear is the fallout. The encounter the former student said really put a hurt on me because I trusted her as a friend. He kept the sexual encounter secret except for a few, a few close friends. He said he did not tell Trey Falwell what his mother had done, but the encounter had changed the dynamic between the two. He said they began to push Trey out of the band. They began to push him out of the group. Slowly. But Trey wanted to stay long enough to play in an important show that they had. So they let him stay. And they sucked at that show. And he said that was the last time the group performed together. He said, at first he didn't know. He said, um, when Farwell first contacted him over social media, over social media, she posed as a blonde North Carolina woman in her early 20s and said she created a fake account. <laughs> a fake account, people. He said at first he didn't know who it was and he realized something was amiss. Something was amiss. Something wasn't right. He knew something was wrong. Trying to find my video here. He said she was saying stuff like a 20 or 20 year 20. She was saying stuff a 20 or 20 year old would not say. He said it was like real Southern charm, like an older lady would say, like older people would say. And that's when he realized that it was Becky. And so from then forward, she started contacting him with her regular account. And so it, this article goes on and on and on how she seduced him in, um, with texts and emails and how she, just like she was falling for John Carlo, she was falling for this student. She was falling for him. She sent him a Facebook message, said, I love watching you before a show. I can always tell that you are a little nervous about how you tap your hands on your pants. He remembers feeling uncomfortable because of how closely she seemed to be watching him. She said, he said, her praise of the then student's talents became effusive. What you did at the, band, at the Battle of the Bands was truly genius, she wrote, getting everyone to stand up and come near the stage. It was so neat to see people singing along to Shady Grove, of course, through the tears in my eyes, that song always gets to me. Becky thought that he wrote that song about her, the bandmate said. It wasn't the former student, it wasn't the former student said. He recalled Becky Falwell frequently asking him to write a song for her. I think she just wanted to believe that Shady Grove was about her. He said, the lyrics went, my dear love, I love your mess and everything in between. The song lyrics read, if we slow down long enough, I can show you what I mean. Mm, mm, mm. 
He says, even when he tried to stay away from Falwell, she continued making advances. He was getting phone calls after phone calls after phone calls from her. Even when he was in class, he, she would leave messages like, the corniest thing you could do, like singing the James Blunt song, You're Beautiful, leaving it on my voicemail. He remembers, I just said, this can't happen anymore. But Falwell was persistent. She got too brash with stuff, he said. In one instance, Becky approached the then student in a public place on Liberty's campus and had him concert tickets. She was buying Kings of Leon tickets and showing up and handing them to me in front of people. He said she began to get close with his mother, befriended his mother, buying him stuff. And he just kept avoiding her. And after a while, she finally got the message. It was nice knowing you, she wrote in another message. And he said, what in the world are you talking about? When she sent him that. He, by now he found himself a girlfriend. She said, I'm so thrilled that you have found a girlfriend. I knew it wouldn't be long before someone noticed all the great qualities that you have. I just want you to be happy. And it hurts to realize that remaining friends with me must not make you that way. Please just be kind enough to let me know whether or not you have received my text. I am sorry that six months of friendships have, friendship has ended this way. Maybe time will heal whatever wounds that I have caused you. And maybe your Christian heart will allow you to forgive me. Always be if. He contacted her in 2011. He needed to get enrolled back in school. And he returned to Liberty and finished his degree <laughs> in 2012. He decided to come forward with his story because of what he now sees as an abuse of power on the part of Becky Falwell. He believes now that the day in the driveway when she asked if he had told his friends that I think you're hot, that she was testing him. He said he felt like Joseph from the Bible when, when Potiphar's wife made a pass at him, at Joseph. Only he didn't run. He stayed. So that's the story of Becky Falwell. And now you understand why I said she reminds me of Jada Pinkett messing with boys that are old enough to be her sons, and in fact, gave oral sex to one of her son's friends, bandmates. It's all coming out. It's all coming out. So I would like to know, what do you guys think about this? Like, comment, subscribe. Let's talk about it. It's your girl, B. Sparrow. I'm out. Hey, this is B. Sparrow from Buzz Tweet Radio. Join me every morning from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Spreaker.com. We can also be heard on iHeartRadio, Spotify, 
Google Podcast, Castbox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, and Pod Chaser. That's Buzz Tweet Radio with three Z's on Spreaker.com. It's your girl, Miss Sparrow. Hollow. <laughs>